Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin. So how well does Windows 10 run on low-end hardware? So I found the lowest end piece of hardware in the house at the moment. Uh, this is the HP Stream 7. It is a $100 seven inch tablet computer that uh, is running with an Intel processor so it can run the full version of Windows. And in fact, when I bought it, it had Windows 8.1, which I was able to upgrade for free uh, to Windows 10. Now what was interesting is that uh, there's not too much on here as far as RAM and processor power and storage. So it's got 32 gigabytes of storage storage and only a gigabyte of RAM and uh, that 32 gigabytes of storage wasn't really enough to be able to install Windows 10 with because it has to download all of its files and then have enough room to move everything around when it does that uh, upgrade. But I was able to do was take out uh, an SD card and stick it into the machine and actually have that be uh, my, my help in uh, installing Windows 10. So they thought about these folks with tablets who may have some issues and I was able to use external storage. Now I was using that media creation tool that I detailed in my last video video, so I'll link to that above so you can check that out. I'm not sure if it will have the same behavior when you do the uh, standard upgrade, but I think it might actually because it looked like that was uh, the standard upgrade uh, behavior to allow you to use a uh, SD card or an external drive. So what I wanted to do is just show you a couple things and just show you how it runs. Now what I did do is I wiped it out uh, after I uh, did the upgrade because I had a different Microsoft account. I just kind of wanted to start from scratch, but the upgrade went actually very smoothly. It took a long, long time. In fact, at some points I thought it was kind of held up, but but uh, it did get done eventually and uh, came right back up and everything worked fine. However, when I wiped it out, I did the recovery where you can just start from scratch. Uh, when I wiped it out, the automatic screen rotation thing stopped working. So that was one thing that hasn't worked uh, since I did that wipeout, but everything else is fine. And I've got 20 gigabytes or so of available storage. So I wanna show you first though, uh, is what mode we're in. We're in tablet mode right now, as you can see right over here. And what that means is that everything will run full screen. So the Metro apps here, like the Edge browser, uh, will run in full screen. It actually runs pretty nicely here. We can click on a uh, news article here and let that come up. You can see how fast things render. So it feels about uh, what it felt like when it was running with uh, Windows 8, um, but it's uh, now, of course, running Windows 10, which it runs pretty nicely. This is a very small screen, so you don't have a lot of real estate to work with, especially with all this uh, MSN menu stuff right in the way there. But one thing that's kind of cool is that they uh, implemented this little annotation feature within uh, the Edge browser, so you can highlight things if you want. So I can click on this little highlighter here and highlight some stuff on the web page. I can uh, maybe draw a circle around something. I can change uh, the colors and I can add little, uh, you know, little notations and stuff. So it's pretty cool. They've got a neat little way to annotate the web, if you will. And what we'll do is we'll leave this running and maybe I'll load up Chrome now so you can see how non-Metro apps work. So let's go uh, over to my little button here and we'll pull up uh, Chrome, which we recently installed. Now what happens when you're in tablet mode is that everything runs in full screen. So you can see now that we're running Chrome, uh, Chrome is running full screen. There is a resize button up here, but it doesn't work. So if I push it, nothing happens. It just kind of stays there. Uh, you can't go split screen either, which is something that you were able to do in Windows 8.1. You could kind of drag one window out from the side and go split screen, but uh, now it doesn't do that. It just brings you back to this uh, window chooser so you can pick which one you want to go back to. So that was one thing that uh, was kind of lacking there. Uh, if, even if you go into something like Steam, which often has that little window that pops up to check the version, uh, what it'll do is, well actually I already had it loaded here, but what it'll do is it'll actually put up that little uh, checking for updates thing and make it full screen, which is kind of funny. But again, you've got a little resize button here, but you're not able to do anything with it. But what was really surprising to me uh, was that I can actually take it out of tablet mode. What Microsoft had said was like small screens, I think it was like under 10 inches, we're not going to be able to go into the traditional desktop mode, but it doesn't look like they uh, implemented that restriction. So if I pull out the action center here at the side and uh, tap on tablet mode, it will switch now uh, into desktop mode, as you can see. Uh, that menu, I'll get that action center out of the way there. Uh, the menu now that we had before when we hit the start menu now becomes a real start menu and not the Windows 8 style start menu. And I can kind of go down here. I've got my taskbar down at the bottom. So it really is uh, running like a desktop computer. And now I can resize my windows. So maybe what they figured was that instead of the split screen thing, you can kind of do uh, this little mode here and uh, you know, organize your windows the way you want to organize them. So on seven inches, we don't have a lot of room to play with, but kind of nice that uh, the desktop mode did not go away, which was something I was really concerned about. And I have to say, it really does, I, I'm always blown away by this cheap hardware and how well things really do run, considering uh, just there's really not much in this thing to make this that smooth, but it really does feel uh, like a very nicely performing computer there. So pretty cool stuff. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you, and then I'll uh, take some questions in the comments below. Maybe we'll do a couple of follow-ups. I know a lot of you are interested in this. We're gonna play uh, Xbox One uh, off my Xbox. So let's boot up that uh, Xbox One app here and see
see how this works. So we'll get this going here. Maybe I'll go full screen with this one, if I can get the right tap on there. Uh, and we'll connect to our Xbox One in the next room. I am, by the way, connecting via Ethernet. I, I reviewed this thing a couple of months ago from Pluggable. It's a, a dock that works with the HP Stream 7 and a few other uh, devices to give you a bunch of ports. So I got Ethernet on here, a couple of extra USB ports, and it charges the device at the same time. So it just plugs in via the uh, OTG cable here, and I get all that stuff working. So it's a very convenient device, although it costs as much as the tablet does. So if you really need this functionality, uh, you might want to just look at a cheap laptop or something instead, but it is a a great uh, little dock. Um, so here we go. We are uh, loaded up on our Xbox app. I'm going to uh, go down to my Xbox One, which is ready for streaming. So we've got Grand Theft Auto 5 already loaded. So I'm going to go ahead and click on stream. I do have my Xbox One controller connected. And now we'll see how a seven inch tablet works for uh, Grand Theft Auto. So we'll go ahead and uh, Get, wait for uh, story mode to load up here, and we'll see how all of this works. I just had to wait for it to load up on the Xbox side, but as you can see, uh, we are playing our Xbox One on our seven inch tablet here. This is going over via ethernet, uh, but I was checking the, uh, the bandwidth. This actually feels about the same as it did on my Dell that I tested this with the other day. Uh, and I'll go over to our stats here and we'll see what kind of bandwidth we're getting out of it. So about the same, about 11 megabits per second right now. So I think if you had wireless AC, uh, you would see similar performance right now than as, as what I'm seeing at the moment here. So it does seem to work pretty well. Uh, the latency feels about what it did before. So if I tap on the button here, you can just see how uh, it's not too bad. It looks like actually they improved the latency slightly from when I tested this a little while ago. Um, but it's pretty amazing that the, uh, even this little tablet can actually uh, stream a game very, very well, very smoothly, uh, very minimal latency, and we're able to play our Xbox One on a cheap little tablet. And I would say that this is the same kind of gaming experience you would have uh, on perhaps a gaming notebook or something as well. So that might be a little bit more convenient than maybe propping up a tablet on your lap or something, but a Surface would work too. Uh, and as you can see, it really does look pretty nice on the seven inch screen here. So pretty neat stuff. Uh, so Windows 10, I can say, runs great on these cheap little tablets. I haven't done all that much with it, but I did want to give you kind of a brief overview just to see how snappy it feels and whether or not the Xbox functionality can. And so far, uh, it seems to be able to do everything on this little tablet that I can do on uh, more expensive computers. Just a couple of little glitches right now related to that screen orientation thing and a few other things that will have to get worked out. But uh, so far, so good. So that is Windows 10 running on the HP Stream 7. We'd love to hear some things you would like me to run on this. So let me know in the comments below. It's not going to be any faster as a gaming device than uh, it was under Windows 8.1. So I'm probably not going to do too many game demos, but if there are specific uh, features or user interface things that you'd like to see, uh, please let me know and I'll test them out. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.